Hey everybody, welcome to another Steve's Bass Guitar Lessons. I've got a new hat on today, it's my Key West Conch Republic hat. Um, sent for some viewers in Key West, Florida. Thanks guys for the hat, really like it. Um, today we're going to be talking about something that's very important. Um, not just for bass guitarists, but all musicians. Like um, keyboardists and uh, regular guitarists. And that is tuning. Uh, I can't stress the importance of how important it is to have your guitar or keyboard or regular guitar in tune when you're playing. And uh, the way to achieve that is to tune your instrument. And to tune your instrument, you'll need one of these bad boys, um, also known as an electric tuner. Um, or you can go old school. In the old days, before they had electric tuners, they used to use um, more natural means. This is back, like way back in medieval times. Um, they used to actually use a tuna fish. Um, now, when I tell my students that, oh yes, you can use a tuna fish to um, to tune your guitar, they think I'm making some kind of joke or something, which is not true. Um, it is true, you can use a tuna fish. That is why they are called tuna fishes. Uh, tuna fishes uh, were originally used to tune pianos. They're quite large um, a large tuna fish you'd lift up the lid of the grand piano you would lay the tuna fish across all the strings and then play that creates a certain resonation in the fish which you could hear with a stethoscope or if you had a trained ear just put your your ear on the fish's um, mouth and you could hear a resonation within the um the cavity the body cavity of the fish and um when it resonated in the correct way then you knew your piano was completely in tune um, hence tuna fish now, of course, these days it's pretty hard for the gigging musician, such as um, myself, to uh, take a tuna fish to uh, um, to a gig, and sometimes you forget your batteries for your your for that bad boy. Um, so, fortunately, there is a way around that, and that is you can use tin tuna. Tin tuna fish works that works a treat. Um, and how you do that is this: instead of actually laying a tuna fish on the the um the base you put it on on the string you just touch the tin on the fifth fret the fifth fret um, is your tuning fret uh, then you adjust the tuning pegs like so and listening to the resonation moving up all five all four five six strings how many seven strings how many however big your bass is one string you just uh, move up the strings um, using the um, and the great thing about this is, of course, it requires absolutely no batteries. Um, I mean, you could put a battery in it, but it would be useless. It wouldn't do anything. And uh, also, if you're hungry at the end of the gig, and let's face it, we all get really peckish at the end of a gig. Um, I can, I'll can. i usually eat a few sandwiches at the end of a gig. Um, if it's a really big gig, like a stadium gig or something, I might have a, a roast dinner. Um, we all get hungry after a gig. You can eat your tuna fish. You can eat it. Of course... If you've got more playing to do that tonight, if you're kicking onto an after party at a club or something like that, don't don't eat your your, your tin tuna fish or you you get a you know if you get break a string or something you you ruin for the rest of the night um, unless someone else has brought some tuna or something. Now, of course, um, at a pinch you can use sardines too. Not as good; they tend to be a bit a, a little bit flat. Um, you tend to tune your instrument a little flat using sardines. If you're vegetarian, of course, and you don't like the smell of tuna, you can use some refried beans. Now, I did have one student who arrived at the lesson completely out of tuna and saying, what the hell is going on? He'd used sweetened condensed milk. Now, um, <laughs> plainly ridiculous. Um, you can't use that. Anyway, I um, hope this has helped you keep your instrument in tune. Um, and I'll see you next time for more, some, more awesome uh, bass guitar lessons. Cheers. Oh, and thanks for the hat, guys.